There was once a man who lived inside a caribou's arse. <laughs> and he could live there because he was very small. He went unnoticed by his host. Well, one day, this caribou had to take an unusually large shit. Plop! Out it came on the ground, and the little man fell out and landed in the shit. Splat. Well, it just so happened that as, it came, as he fell out, a young woman, a young girl, was walking past, and she saw this. And she laughed, and she said, What kind of man lives inside a caribou's arse? And he said, proudly puffing up his chest, what kind of man doesn't? <laughs> and she thought that was a rather cute sort of reply, and she laughed. And she became rather fond of him, and she picked him up. And she took him back to the camp with her. And when she got back to the camp, she showed him off to all her friends, and she said, look what I found. He fell right out of a caribou's <laughs> arms. <laughs> well, it wasn't long before she became rather fond of her, attached to this young, this little man. She treated him like he was her very own child. She'd cuddle him, even suckle him. And she, when she went anywhere, she'd carry him in a little moss bag on her back. Everywhere, that is, except if she went for a piss. She'd leave him behind. Well, one day, she went to the woods for a piss, leaving the man behind. But unbeknownst to her, she, he followed her. And when she'd finished pissing and walked off, he went up there and he pissed exactly where she pissed, right on the same spot. Well, a few months later, her father noticed she had a bit of a bump in her belly and he said, you'll have to marry the man who's done that to you, you know. And she said, I'll marry no man, no man has done this to me, I've not slept with anyone. He thought, like his story. And a few months later, she gave birth to a baby boy. And still she protested that there was no father. Vehemently, it had been, if you like, an immaculate conception. Well, the father started to have doubts about maybe she was actually telling the truth. So he went and consulted the local shaman. And he said, is it possible that my daughter might have given birth without actually having slept with a man? And the shaman thought, and he said, well, yes, actually, it is possible if someone had been conjuring with her, doing magic on her. But the only person around here who could do that is me. And I promise, it wasn't me. <laughs> oh, what are we going to do then? Said the father, how are we going to find out who the father of the baby is? No problem. Leave it to me, said the shaman. I can sort this out. Easy. What we'll do... So we'll call together all of the men in the tribe, in the, in the camp, and we'll sit them down in a circle. And when they're all sat down in a circle, we'll pass the baby around. And whomsoever the baby pisses on, that's the father. Guaranteed. Works every time. <laughs> that's what they did. They called together all the men in the camp, sat them down in a circle, and then when they're all sat down, shaman took the baby off the girl and handed it to the first man and placed it gently in the man's lap and he held it for about half a minute or so and then he passed it round to the next man and went round the circle slowly. Suddenly, someone cried out, It's me! It's me! He's pissed on me! But they realised it was just some old man who rather fancied her and he'd spat on his hands. He'd rather fancy the young girl, so he'd spat on his hands to make it look like the baby had pissed on him. Oh, shut up, you old fart, they said. Behave! <laughs> so the baby carried on going around the circle. And it came all the way back to the start of the circle. And still it hadn't pissed on anyone. Well, the shaman was most perplexed. He thought, well, it normally works. Maybe there's something wrong with the baby's bladder. I don't know. Then he noticed, sitting over to one side, very quietly, <laughs> was the little man. And he had a little shamanic intuition. He said, he picked up the baby and he said, here, you hold the baby. And he passed it over to the little man, 
landed in him, almost crushing him, landed in his lap, almost crushing him. And as soon as the baby landed in his lap, it pissed all over him. Well, you can imagine, there was an outcry. People were shocked, they couldn't believe it. How could, it possibly, how could he possibly be the father? His, well, his penis is no bigger than a bone needle. I resent that, said the little man. <laughs> Eventually, he, he said, OK, I confess, it was me. I did get her pregnant, but I did it with my piss, not my penis. Works every time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can imagine the young girl was not very happy about this, ter this turn of events. And she said, I can't marry him. You know, he's handsome and all that, but he's so small, I'd be tripping up over him all the time and everything. I can't marry him. And her father said, I'm sorry, he's the father, you know the rules, you have to marry him. He's too small, she said. So once again, the little man butted in, he said, OK, everyone, calm down, take a chill pill, I think I can sort this out. Mm -hmm. I've got a solution. They said, OK, what's the solution? Well, you see... I'm also a shaman, as it happens, and the reason I'm this size is because I did the same thing to my brother's wife. I got her pregnant by mixing my piss with her piss. And well, my brother, he's also a shaman, and he wasn't very happy about it, so he conjured me down to this size and made me live in the caribou's arms. <laughs> yeah, so um, what's your solution then? Bring me a shaking tent. So they brought him a shaking tent. Circular tent, four poles, made out of beaver skin. And he asked them to place some hot rocks, heated rocks, in the middle of it, which they did. And when it was all set up, he led the girl into the tent. And he sat her down. And he said to her to hug her knees, sitting down. And then he produced a little shaman's drum. Got a little drumstick made out of whalebone. And he started to beat the drum. And he started to go into a shamanic trance. And when his eyes started to glaze over a bit, he suddenly turned to the girl and he said, What do you want, my dear? And she said, I just want us to be the same size. And as soon as she said that, <laughs> the tent started to shake violently, as if a great wind had blown into it. And the drumming went up into a crescendo, and eventually, the wind stopped and the drumming stopped. And then the two emerged from the tent, hand in hand. And indeed they were both now the same size. They were both big enough to live inside <laughs> a caribou's <laughs> arse. And that's what they did. And they lived happily ever after. And some people say, well, what about the baby? <laughs> And I guess the baby would have ridden on top of the carriage. <laughs> <laughs>